Hello, this course four will be about community detection in networks. So first, we will see what communities are, and then we will see how we will see how to evaluate the quality of a certain community structure in a network. Then we will look at some methods at our disposal that will allow us to detect communities and networks, and then we will see an application of these exam of these methods on real life examples. So what is a community? So a community, it's a group of nodes that are highly connected to each other and little or less connected to the rest of the nodes of the network. For example, here is a community. And what is a clustering? A clustering is a partition of the network into clusters or communities that is each node belongs to only one cluster or a community, like this. So what do communities mean? Of course, the meaning of community de communities depend on the interpretation of nodes and links in the network. That is, the underlying plot process of links formation is important. Often, a community represents a group of nodes that are highly interacting with each other. In geography, we have the example of close entities, such as, for example, firms, cities, people, etc. This is a direct reference to Tobler's first law of geography that says that two entities that, uh, that are close interact more with each other than two entities that are located further farther apart. But um, geographical, geographical distance is not the only uh, determinant of interaction. Also, entities belong to the same system that is, for example, cities within the same countries, are also more likely to interact with each other. Uh, of course, these two examples are not mutually exclusive and are generally interrelated, since two geographically close entities tend to belong to the same system. So now we will see how to evaluate the quality of a certain clustering or a community structure in a network. We start with an example. Here we have the, the trade network of the uh, European Union NUTS3 regions. So each node is a region, and two nodes are linked to each other if they represent, an um, if they represent um, one of the most important import or export partners. We colored the nodes according to the countries they belong to, and from the first um, visual inspection, we observe that the countries are actually good natural clusters. Um, according to the definition of clusters, we need to have um, within clusters nodes that are densely connected, as we can see here, here for example. And um, between clusters, we need to have um, less densely or weakly connected nodes. Uh, here we even have completely disconnected nodes. And in this case, so so we see that countries that are actually seem to seem to be good natural clusters, and here we come back to the importance of the underlying processes behind the links formation, and in this case, so countries uh, regions within the same countries share uh, a same history, they 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 are geographically close, and they share the same institu institutional context. All these reasons favor their interactions, and here, in particular, th their trade. So the question beyond visual inspection, how can we know if a clustering is good or not? And if we do not have an a priori classification of nodes um, into, into clusters or communities, how can we discover communities? Modularity is historically the first and is still the most used quantitative measure to evaluate the partition of networks into clusters. So we recall that a clustering is a partition of the network into groups of nodes, and a good clustering is, is a clustering in which links are dense within clusters and they are less dense between clusters. So how do we evaluate the quality of a clustering using modularity? So how does modularity work? So for each cluster in the network, it looks at every pair of nodes within the cluster and it compares the actual existence of a link 
with the probability of the edge existence if the nodes kept the same degree but edges were randomly shuffled. So, as we said, we want links to be dense within clusters. So if the, if the link exists, then it's good for the clustering. But the problem is that in, in highly dense graphs in general, in, in globally highly dense graphs, we would tend to have naturally more links within clusters, what, what, no matter what clustering we have. So in order to compensate for this global density effect, we need to compare with the equivalent random network. More details about the formula of the, of the modularity. So for a cursive C clustering with clusters C1, C2 until Cn, the modularity sums over clusters, then over all pairs of nodes within clusters, the difference between the existence or not of the link with the expected existence of the link if uh, of the link if the links were randomly shuffled. So this modularity has value between minus 0.5 and 1. If it has negative value, it means that we have a disassortative clustering, meaning that the links within clusters are less dense than the links between clusters, which is a bad clustering. That's the situation we don't want. And if the modularity is higher than zero, it means that we have an assortative clustering, meaning that the links within clusters are denser than links between clusters. Uh, with a caveat here, that is the maximum and minimum values of modularity are not always possible to reach even if the clustering is perfect so even if we have in we even have some examples of graphs that we can show in in which we have um, graphs composed of uh, full subgraphs that are not connected to each other and even if we take as clusters each full uh, connect, connected component fully connected component we still can, don't have a modularity of one but sometimes it caps at 0 0.5 so um so th this this is kind of a difficulty with you with using the modularity formula is that we we don't really know which is the maximum value it can reach 